Hello, my name is Michael Bruse. I'm the lead developer of Ambient and I'd like to welcome you to the very first video of our new series about our new software component Envyment Mont. Mont is a vector-based editing system which is designed to bridge the gap between um, your mostly vector-based world like GIS software or CAD software programs or building information management, be it OpenStreetMap or other things, and the Envyment model which is basically a grid-based model. And in many times it's not very easy to um, get a vector-based model into a grid-based model, especially if you have a lot of specialized information such like in Envimet. So therefore we have designed the uh, software MOND, which is still in, in the better version, so that means um, things are probably going to change in the next um, few months or even years, and, but basically the, the concept behind it will be the same, even if the buttons will look a bit differently or we will have a different um, layout in some um, parts of the interface. So just to have a brief look on the very left side, we have what we call the table of contents, which is actually a list of layers um, of your map. At the moment it's basically empty. But all the information in a GIS software or even in a CID software is stored in layers. That means um, one layer holds a typical area of um, information. Most of the time it is a typical topic of information. For example, one layer only holds um, the trees, another layer holds the buildings, a different layer holds the different surfaces. And of course, you can have as many layers as you want, but finally, in the end, if you are going to produce an environment model out of it, they all will be combined to one big model. So here on the side, you see um, the name of the layers. Actually, it's the name of the layer groups. There are two, uh, sorry, there are three different um, layers which are in every map, which belongs to every map. We will talk about this later on. This is georeferences sub-areas and topography. So we will see, especially for the sub-areas and the topography, what is this about later on. Then basically we have two remaining groups. The first group is GIS and the second group is modeling. Both groups will hold vector data. The only or big difference between the two is that in the GIS layer you can store any vector information you like even if it doesn't have any relation to Envimet and even if it doesn't have anything to do with environmental modeling at all. So that's fine, the GIS layers can store any information. So when we go to layers, for example, to see what typical layers do we have. So for example, we have here the option to add GIS layers and then you see what kind of layers we have. And basically in a GIS, we only distinguish between the, the geometrical form, the geometric form of the layers. So um, we have layers which are basically point-based, we have layers that are line-based, and we have layers which contain closed polygons. And as a special kind of layer, we also have text, which is very beta at the moment, and we have bitmap layers which are used or which can be used to store um, pictures in your map. So you see, these are just very few layers, but of course um, anything on any element on a GIS or a CID system can basically relate it to be either point, line or polygon. And on one layer you only can have point elements or only line elements or only polygon elements, but you cannot mix the two or the three. If we go to a modeling layer, so as I said, it's basically the same, it's, it also adds point lines or polygon layers, but these layers are already linked to the Envimet world. So for every layer of information we do have in the Envimet model, we have a certain kind of modeling layer. For example, building layers, simple vegetation, 3D vegetation, surface, and for sources we have sources as point, sources as a line, or sources as an area layer. And finally we have the receptor layers. So basically they are also GIS layers, but they have to have a certain format and they have to carry certain information you need to work with them in Envimet. We will see that as an example later on. 
So as a walk around, so if I add, for example, a GIS layer to the map, let's say a new polygon layer, a dialog opens where I can give the layer a name, for example, my polygon, give it a remark, and we all let the other things as a default and say add layer. And then you see the new layer is added below the GIS group as a GIS layer. So we can close this window for now because we don't need it right now just to walk you around um, in the map. So the biggest area of the screen in Mond is of course the map. And it is always a vector-based metric map. So if you do not anything new or you have just started the Mont world, um, it will have a certain dimension. Typically, it's about 2000 by 2000 meters. So if we zoom out to the complete extent, so here we are, you see the map here is the point zero zero. You can see it down here the coordinates in meters, so here's, here's the point zero zero, and here is the uppermost point, and it's, uh, it's 5,000 by 5,000 actually. Uh, so please change the, the, the remark that it's 2,000 by 2,000, it's actually uh, 5,000 by 5,000. So that means um, any object we add here will be based on a metric layer. So um, we can change this to another georeference system like UTM system later on but basically you can also work with this but remember always um, this is a layer format which is in metric coordinates. So we just have seen these are the zoom buttons for zoom in and zoom out. Um, MOND is an open world system so that means even if there are elements which are outside the box they are still stored but basically most of the operations are limited to the white rectangle, rectangle which we call the, the world. Um, you can turn on and off the grid. So um, by default um, you have a grid which draws a helper line each 20 meters. You can also change this to 50 meters or um, if you don't need the helper lines at all you can turn it off. And we will see what the other elements are for later on. And then basically um, we see in the later of this session and in the other sessions what is the meaning of all the other um, information layers. So um, in this tutorial we will basically show um, what can we do if we want to digitize a new world or what, when, how can we digitize objects. Then later on in another tutorial we will see how can we access um, data from the real world, for example, by loading a shapefile or by um, accessing the data from OpenStreetMap or from Open Topography. But for the moment, let's just start with a very simple example. Um, let's digitize a polygon, a point and a line. So I already do have a polygon layer. So the next thing I would like to have is a layer for lines. So I say I want a new line layer and I say my lines. Add layer and finally I want to have a point layer. I create my points. You can rename it at any time. It's just for your information. Of the computer doesn't matter which kind of names you give. So um, if I want to edit an element, so I select the layer. For example, if I want to edit a polygon, I have to select the polygon layer and move for up to this button here and say edit my polygon. So it's a very um, important thing to remember that um, only one layer can be open for editing at a time. So if you want to add elements, delete elements, modify elements, you will have to open this layer for editing. And then you can change elements, add elements and so on. And if you're finished with that layer, you have to say finish editing this layer. And then this layer will be closed for editing and then you can open a different layer. This is a very important concept from GIS 
because it's preventing you that you change or interact with layers that you don't actually want to change at the moment. So it's a kind of safety uh, procedure. So now I have um, decided to edit the polygon layer. And what I do at the first thing, because I don't have any polygon here on the layer so far, I click on the plus button and add polygon. And now it tells me, now please digitize your new polygon. And this is what I do. So I click the points for the polygons with the left mouse button. For example, a lake. So, and when I already finished, the last point of the polygon will be finished with a double click. And then the polygon will automatically be closed and it's showed in a default way with a hatch style and it's now ready and um, I can carry on digitizing a new polygon. For, for example, here another piece of a lake or a part of the river. So, of course, remember um, the quality of the digitization process is up to you and things that are looking good in a very coarse zoom may not look very good if you zoom in. And one thing, how do I move the map? So if I want to change the map, this is very simple. Press the shift key and click the left mouse and just drag the map. So once again, press the shift key, mouse down, left mouse button down and just move um, the map and release the left mouse button when you are finished with that. Maybe we will change this procedure later on. But for the moment, it works like this. So now I have um, done this so far, and I say finish editing layer. Then my polygon layer is finished. And then for example, I can digitize um, points. So I select the my point layer, and again, go to the layers on menu bar, set edit my points. Now the point layer is open for editing, and I can just say add point. And of course, there is not, not much to click. So you just click points. So if this is a tree, for example, where the trees should be. And here you are. You can also select an element. That's very small indeed. So you can select an element and pressing the right, uh, the, the red X removes the element. Or if you want to move an element, select the element and then go to the move tool or enable the move tool, click the element and move the element to the new position. Ah, too easy to, to hit it. And once you're done, you say finish editing layer, and then you are ready with that. So now we do have a metric map of um, maybe a lake or a river. So one important thing um, in GIS is that each element do have has attributes. So that means I can attach information onto the element, each element on which a layer they ever it be. So um, I see my point layer that is a, is a bit very small. So I can go to my points, for example, and then go to layer properties. So then you get some um, general information. So it's a point layer. It's from the GIS layer type and it has six elements for the moment, which seems to be true. And you can also go to display settings and set modify and then you can change the color, for example, if this should be trees. And you can also um, change the point size of the symbols because it's very small. Say OK and modify. And now it's a bit better to see. So let's talk about the attributes. Um, if we open the information window here, this is this little box here. And then we have the option to look at the um, attributes of an object. So for example, if I click 
on this polygon here I have the information this is from the layer my polygon it has two um, elements for the moment this one and that one and this element has 50 nodes and that element has uh, 39 nodes but there is no attribute given for the moment um, this is uh, not a problem so far but if we want to work on a com more complex maps and if we want to create models, of course, we have to have attributes. For example, buildings must have a height. And this is a very basic attribute to have a height. Or, um, for example, we have any chance to... Uh, we must um, give, for example, this um, structure here a name. So a very um, easy... We have a, the op option to give it a name here, but we can give it a different name. So um, what we can say is we can go to edit attributes. So we go to the, my polygon layer and say edit attributes. And then we have a list of names of attributes which are at the moment for the objects on that layer. Um, so that's the same concept like in a GIS. So um, if it's not clear in that tutorial, you maybe look for some GIS tutorials and see what um, object attributes or attributing objects in a GIS software means. So it's the same here in Mont. So and I can add an attribute, for example, um, public name. Okay. Or um, water drinkable. So you can basically add any object or any uh, um, attribute you like and all the attributes for the moment are just text attributes. And if you are finished, um, you can say close. And now if you click on the element, you see, wow, you see the attributes. We have just selected public name and water drinkable. And um, this attribute list is uh, valid for all objects on this layer. So any object on the layer, my polygon, um, will have the same attribute list. Maybe some attributes are empty, but basically they do need to have the same attribute list. So how can I add now um, attributes? Because um, I have added these two attributes um, just after I have digitized the, the elements the, here. And so obviously these elements do not carry any information for these attributes. So we can change this, but we have to open the layer again for editing. So we do not only edit the geometry of an element in the edit mode, but we also change the, the attributes. And now you see if I select an element here on the layer, you have the attribute list here. And now we have the option to, to enter values here. Um, it's funny lake, water drinkable, yes, oops, yes and say apply um, or here funny river water drinkable better not apply so you see the attributes are stored once you press apply and once you have done that you can finish editing the layer um, close the editing module on the, once you click on the element here now you see in the object info uh, that there are the information stored and these are data in it. Let's move it forward to, to the end limit. So let's, for example, say we want to digitize some buildings. So I move them into the space here, with the upper corner here. And the first thing um, is I want to um, add a new layer on which I will place my buildings and of course buildings are polygons so I add a new polygon layer and call it my buildings and I can give it a different color if I like or fill style so you're free with that so let me just green so add layer and then I will add some building I go to edit my building and then it's the same procedure I just add some buildings here. Okay, fine. So, but now wait a minute. I say finish editing layer. I draw these buildings because I want to have them in Envymet. And I know 
that there are several informations um, that we need in NVMet for buildings, but at least the very basic two information, um, because we keep the, can keep the wall material, the roof material, and default values, but the one information I need for every building is the building height, and if I like a building bottom. So um, it would be good when I digitize the buildings that I at least for the moment store the height of the building. And so, because I don't want to do this all the time anew, um, I will quickly um, add an attribute to my layer here. Added attributes like before, and I add a new attribute and call this building height. Okay, close. So then again, I open my layer for editing because I've closed this just before. Um, select my my object and see, here you see now uh, my new building has um, the option to store a building height and I say okay you're 20 meter so don't add, don't add meters because everything is metric if it's a it's a value here I say apply and now I can carry on digitizing buildings And best is to immediately also add the, the height value so that then it's done and you cannot forget it. Okay, so once we're finished with that, um, I could press finish layer. I do press finish layer, so once it's stored, um, but I reopen it immediately because there are some more tools maybe I can show you. I go back and open the layer for editing and select the building or an element in general. And here, for example, I have the option to modify the building's outline, for example, with this tool. And I can, for example, delete individual points. I'm not going to do this right now. Or, for example, I can shift points. So if I see it's not the best um, digitized quality, I can select a point and move it a bit. Better zoom a bit more. So these editing options are better done in a, in a, in a good zoom because otherwise you, you won't be able to hit the points. Okay, once you finish that element, you say okay. Oh, I want to edit this element as well. You have to select this element and go back to the modify mode. And then you can do the same stuff here. Once the mouse have once the point is recognized by the mouse, it turns purple, and you can click it with the right left mouse and move it to a new location. Or you can even delete it, which I doesn't want to do right now. And um, there is one more tool, so this is a kind of general tool. This is the last button here. Maybe we have we will change this later on. Um, you can copy elements, you can clone objects, for example. So it basically um, creates a copy of the same object, which is of course now not at the best position. But we already know this this tool. This is the move tool here. Um, this one here is the move tool. So you can click that. and move this object to a new location. So, all right, now we have um, added a number of um, objects. And if I want to modify some of the objects, you already saw how I could interfere with the, the outline, but I can also, uh, for example, rotate objects. So if I go to edit again, select the object, and then in the tool menu, I go to move and change element I can move the element quickly or slowly, or I can also rotate the element. Once you're happy with that, press OK and it's done. OK, so now we do have um, a number of layers and we have a number of buildings on the layer. For now, all the buildings are um, greenish, um, but I can also use a different kind of coloring. If I go on the layer of my buildings and then to display style, 
So um, this is the, the, the most simple option is to use a single color in green in this case so all the objects on that layer are in green. Or I can say I can color it by a value that of course um, demands that you do have a value in your attribute table but we do have an at value in the attribute table because we have added the building height and um, then you say I want to have um, a color scale um, based on the building height and I say OK. Then you see all the buildings are colored according to their building height. Um, later on in, in, in upcoming versions we will also have a legend here and a color scale so that you actually know what color refers to which to which building. So um, I have one building here which doesn't have a color. I have to need to check that. Oh, it doesn't have a building height. You see, and if you use that way of displaying the objects, you discover where you have forgotten things. Oh, I have to change this. I go back to edit and say 10 meter. Uh, that's fine. Okay, you see, this is a GIS layer. Um, it's GIS because um, nobody told me that it has to be buildings and I can store any other information and I could also draw the building on this GIS layer without the building height. Well, now let's come to the more important part. How can we create modeling layers so that we can create a model for EnviMet? Um, to show you this, I will use a different set of buildings as compared to the ones I have just digitized because they are slightly out of scale, a little bit too big. But the procedure is the same for all layers um, whenever you have digitized them. And we will just start over with a new set of digitized buildings, which are a bit more fancy than the one I did before. Now, when we talk about um, generating an environment model, it is important that we see um, the differences between the GIS layers that we have for the moment and the modeling layers. So I will now add a new layer and this is a modeling layer for this time. So I will finish my editing of the building layer, which is a regular GIS polygon layer and go to add modeling layer and select new building layer. Uh, and give it a name, for example, plant buildings. I can also modify the color if I like to maybe some orange color. Say OK, add layer. So now it looks like a regular map layer, but it isn't. So when we select this layer and go to edit plant layer and I have the same options again. I can add a polygon, click on it, and for example, if I have a plant building here, digitize the building just the same way I have previously digitized the existing buildings. So there it is. And now you see the big difference. I haven't introduced any attributes so far. So um, in the modeling layer, we have a set of attributes that is already predefined and which is um, the required sets of information that Envimit will need to generate a modeling profile out of this layer, which means a profile which allows the MOND software to export this to a valid Envimit model. So you see there is a, high, a list of attributes. Um, I do not need to fill in all attributes, but um, the most important attribute, of course, like in our previous example, is the top of the building. You see it's already existing and it's red because I do not have a height of the building right now. But there are also several other informations which can be used by the building layers and which can be used by the environment model. For example, the building button, in the case it's not um, a zero, I can give it a name. For example, I can select the building wall material out of the environment database. So just select some example or I can select the roof material um, and I can as well select to say green and so on and so on. But definitely the most important thing is to, ex um, to assess a, a building height. So I will say 30 meters, for example. Don't forget to press apply. And then we have to start the, the information. 
So uh, once again, this should be all. I finished this layer. I can remove this. Um, if I want to check the information, I can go to display style and say, okay, we do not want um, a, a, f a fill color which is on the same for all buildings, uh, which looks nice as a map, but doesn't give us information. So we can say, okay, use um, an attribute field and use that attribute field to color the building. So for example, from my um, GIS layer, I have the attribute field height. I can say, use this information to color the buildings. I see there is one building which seems to be empty. I can check this. Oh yeah, I have an assigned an attribute here, so definitely I need to do this again. So just go on edit, select the building, it's already selected, and maybe say 15 meters, apply, and finish, and now everything is fine. And the same for the um, modeling layer, I can also change the display style here from a single solid color to, for example, the information field building top. So then I have a good graphical um, feedback on how it does look like um, if any building, all the buildings do have a height attribute. Okay, so for, the, for now, I do have um, two layers now, um, a modeling layer, which I have just designed and which I could use immediately in the Envimap model processing. Uh, but still, I do have my other buildings and these other buildings are still on the GIS layer. And um, as I said before, we cannot use these GIS layers directly because it's not clear if they contain all the informations that are actually required to build an environment model. So what I need to do right now is to export this building layer here, buildings or this GIS layer, um, to a modeling layer. So I select the layer and I go to export to modeling layer. And then we get a new export dialog. Um, where we have to fill out some um, aspects and I will check on. So the first information we will need to set is to what kind of modeling layer type do we want to export this. So of course we want to export it to a building layer. So you see I have the set of all possible modeling layers which are known by the model right now. So I select on building layer. So then you have the information. These are the attributes which are expected by the building modeling layer. So basically these are the same we have just seen in our new plant building layer. So again, building top, bottom, name, and so on. And you see all the question marks here. So um, when we export our GIS layer to the modeling layer, we have to fill in these information, not all of it, of course, but at least the building top again. So there are two different ways to fill it. The first possibility is to say I assign a fixed value to all elements. So that means any of the objects which are copied from my GIS layer to the modeling layer will get the same attribute. So for example, the bottom of all buildings should be zero because all the buildings are standing on the ground. There's no difference between the buildings. So I select fixed value, building button and say apply. And then you say, see here uh, as a feedback, um, we will assign the value zero to the building button. So, but then for the building top, of course, I do not want to have the same um, height value for all the elements because I have invested some time to put in the correct height. So I will use the second option, say assign values using attributes data from the original GIS data. And so if I select this options, I have an option field here, copy values from, and then we have a list of the attributes which are stored in the GIS layer. Actually, for the moment, they are just one option, the height field. Um, the units are metric, of course, and I say apply. Then the system knows, okay, we take the building top from the value that is stored in the attribute ta table of um, the GIS layer buildings under the attribute height. Okay, so we say export to layer. And then you see a new layer has been generated. It's called modeling of buildings. Actually, it's of course now hiding the original GIS layer. Um, I can also change the display style to see if everything worked fine. So I say color by value and again, take the building top as the value that I'm going to use for the color. And here we are, seems good since that all the attributes have been um, transferred to our new modeling layer. 
So now we are close to generate an NVMap model. And one thing is missing. And I have the option to define areas. So if I have a big map, it's not a big map right now here, but if you have a whole city, for example, in your NVMap mod, and um, you can define sections of the cities, quarters, and so on, you would like to analyze. And to do this, I need to add a sub area to my model. So I go to the system category sub areas, which is empty right now. Again, go to edit sub areas. We see our well known edit dialog and I said add element. And then I can open a rectangle around the area of my interest. So in this case, around the buildings. Press the left mouse to finish it and give it a name. If I like, I can also um, change the color as well. If you have several in one map, say add element. And here we are, you see we have a new sub area, which is about 460 by 312 meters. I can also rotate the area. We will see that later on. So in case you want to have a rotated model area, like you know from MVMED, but for the moment, everything is north allegiant, so we keep it as it is. We're finished with the layer, so we can close the, the editing process. And now we're done. So now we can generate an NVMED model out of it. We go to the tab Analyze. The area is already selected. Um, we go to Create NVMED Model. And then you get a list of all layers which are suitable for generating an NVMED model. And these are basically only the layers which are modeling layers. So you don't see the JS layers here, you only see the modeling layers like the buildings. For example, here are a plant building and the uh, modeling of buildings, which was my original GIS layer. So all these information will be compiled in one map. So if you have 10 different layers of buildings, um, all these 10 layers will be summarized and compiled to one information layer for the spaces model then. So you can also select or deselect. So if you do not want to include your plant buildings in the model, you can deselect this. Um, we do not have topography for the moment, so we can deselect it, but it won't make any difference right now because everything is zero. We haven't set the model location because this is just a, a quick example. So now we have to say which area should we like to be the export area as we just have one area in our model right now. This is obviously the area I have just created with my area. Here you see the information to make sure that's the correct area. If you're not sure, you can also adjust the area here. So you can move it a bit to the left or to the right if you think it's not the correct position or you can also rotate it and so on. But for the moment, we're happy with it, so we keep it as it is. And we have to say the model which horizontal resolution should be used to generate the NVMED model. And that's a really big, good new thing in the world software. Previously, if you have added a, a model in spaces, you have to make a very early decision which should be the horizontal resolution. Should it be two meters, three meter, one meter? and then you digitize your model. And if you change your mind later on and say, oh, I, two meters wasn't a good resolution, one meter would have been better or three meter would have been better. So you had to redo the complete editing process. It's not like here, you can, it's just a click. So you can say two meters or you can say 2.5 meters. And um, here you see uh, which, would be, which would be the resulting model size. And it's, in this case, it would be 187 by 126 grids. Um, we can keep all the other options because it's just a walk, uh, a quick walk through and say create model. And now the environment model grids the information and because it's a very small model, it's, it's a very quick thing. Here you see an overview about the software, uh, so about the, the model area. And now the most important thing is save to YNX file that will generate the well-known IMX files. So like model export. So that is done. So we're basically through. We have a new NVMED model, which of course for the moment just includes building because we have not digitized surface types, we haven't digitized vegetation, we haven't digitized any other items. So we can close that and maybe have a quick look at spaces. So here we are back in, in spaces. 
So I can just open the recently created model export file. Here it is. And here we are. Here is our newly created model. Just like any regular spaces model, you know. But if you say, okay, well, I don't like the resolution. That's very simple. You just go back to Mont, say, okay, select the same thing, my area again, and I want a one meter resolution. Say again, create model. It looks, of course, much finer. Again, save it to INX, model export to. and have a look at it in spaces. Here we are, see, the same model, and it just costs me, I don't know, 20 seconds to change the resolution of the model from 2 meters to um, 1 meter, or 2.5 meters to 1 meter. Um, a, a task which have been taking you hours in the previous NVMAT versions. So this wraps up the first video on our MONT tutorial series and thank you very much for watching.